We're here with Ron Hans uh, at Heritage Family Credit Union in Rutland, Vermont, in his office. And Ron's been gracious enough to let us come in and chat with him today. And, and thank you very much, Ron, for, for letting us do that. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. A uh, beautiful office you've got, new facility at Heritage Family Credit Union, their operations center, where the management team has its offices on the second floor here. And that's where we're sitting right now. Um, and so we're real fortunate to be able to spend some, some time with you. Um, so you and I go back uh, a long ways. We started in credit union land about the same time. Uh, you know, I think the first time that um, I met you uh, was uh, you had recently started as the CEO, or maybe it was manager at the time, I don't know what title was being used, of the Ludlow Rutland GE Credit Union, right? Yeah. And I, I have this vision in my mind of seeing you sitting behind a desk in some room in the factory someplace. I don't know if I've got that right. But uh, it, it reminds me that you know a good place to start a conversation is how you got your start uh, in credit union land. Yeah, well, I got started in uh, 1978 as CEO, but back then they called it a manager. Uh, but before that time, I went to work at GE in 1966, and I quickly became involved with the credit union, uh, living in Rutland. Uh, they would have their credit committee meetings in Rutland on Tuesday evenings and so I was a natural person to go to to see if I'd be willing to serve a credit union which I had to find out what it was first <laughs> and uh, anyhow uh, that's been a uh, labor of love my volunteerism lasted uh, from 66 to 78 when I took over wow. as a manager of Ludlow Rutland General Electric Employees Credit Union which we ended up changing the name, uh, not quickly enough, but anyhow, it uh, it was overdue when we, we changed the name to Heritage Family. You know, you went from being a volunteer mm -hmm. directly to being the chief executive manager, CEO yeah. today yeah. of the credit union, so that was quite a change for you. Yeah, yeah. at GE I worked in uh, finance and uh, I, I also that. had a yeah. real estate business and they all kind of dovetailed and uh, everything I did was part-time. I mean, I part-time at the credit union and part-time in real estate and full-time with GE. So I had a I had a full schedule. And the uh, GE part of it was good because GE let me do credit union business uh, as a volunteer uh, on their time. So that was good. GE was a great sponsor company to uh, have because they were willing to give us the time, they were willing to give us facilities, and they were willing to l let us use all their bulletin boards and copy machines and other equipment. So they were a great partner for us. Um, so the thought just occurred to me that some people uh, viewing this um, probably um, don't know an awful lot about Heritage Family Credit Union, Federal Credit Union today. Um, so. What's your like Reader's Digest snapshot picture of what Heritage is like today compared to, to then? Well, we were a single sponsor back then with just General Electric employees and their families being eligible for membership. And then we migrated into select employee groups, what they refer to as SEGs. And we ended up with over 200 of those groups. And most of it uh, was the major employers in the Rutland area and uh, then we also included General Electric plant in Hooksett, New Hampshire. So we now, that was back in 1974, and we today have a very active uh, branch over there and a presence out in the community. And uh, we have that presence as a result of being classified as a uh, uh, underserved area. So uh, the uh, NCUA classified us as that. So that's worked out well. We do a lot of business in New Hampshire. Uh, so the SEGs and the New Hampshire piece of the business and the Rutland community itself uh, is really what makes up our membership at this point. And we serve m mainly, I would say, blue, blue collar, gray collar workers. Although we do have some elements at the hospital of professionals, doctors and whatnot. And for a long time, I know this is a federal credit union now, but it was a state charter credit union originally, and for yeah. a lot of years. A lot of years. Yeah. And for a lot of years, it was the only state charter credit union in Vermont that had a location across the border in, in New Hampshire, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So well, it's been a good relationship with Hooksett. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, so 
you recently announced um, your pending retirement coming mm -hmm. up uh, mm -hmm. sometime in 2014 or towards the end of 2014. Um, and, and congratulations on okay. all your years of service here um, you. and your pending uh, retirement. And um, so that makes me want to ask, you know, looking back over your 36 years, 35, whatever number of years has been, um, you know, what do you, what do you remember, fond what do you think are some of the milestones um, that you've been part of or that you've seen happen, either in credit union land or in this credit union over those three Well, there's a lot years? of real things that you can look at, I mean, such as this building and the building next door. Mm -hmm. uh, but probably one of the intangible things is the philosophy, people helping people. And uh, that goes way back to our roots. And I know the history of credit unions, and I, I, uh, I think dearly of it. It's it's great. It's a great model. And I'll just tell you a story uh, about we're trying to get world class service. We're trying to impress upon the uh, employees the philosophy. And we had a uh, elderly lady who used to come into the credit union and she knew everybody. She would bring cookies and candy and she was always making sure that I got something that she brought in. And uh, she's just one of those dear old ladies. And we didn't see her for two or three months and we were wondering why. And then one day a taxi cab brought her to the, to the door next door. And she came in hobbling and uh, after some inquiries she told us that she had been in a hospital. She had a knee and a hip operated on. In fact, she said, that's why I'm here. I'm looking for $45 to buy a cane. $45? $45. Wow. So the tellers looked and she didn't have $45, but she went out with $45. The tellers gave her the money that she didn't have. And I heard the story, quickly went downstairs and wanted to reimburse them. They wouldn't take it. Wow. So I knew it hit home. I knew that uh, we got there. When I heard that story, and uh, I use that story as an example of people getting it, and they did. So well, that's great that your staff gets it, and um, you know, got it then, and and get it now. And yeah. I bet there's a ton of those kinds of stories yeah. over your three and a half decades here, oh, uh, yeah. uh, along similar kinds of lines. Yeah. Um, and and it makes me think, you know, in Rutland County here, um, you know many parts of the state were hit severely by Irene mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I remember driving through some areas in and around Rutland County um, where it was very visible, you know, at, in the aftermath of all the damage that was done and everything. So I'm guessing you probably had a fair number of members that, um, you know, had unusual circumstances then, too. Yeah. Well, I don't have to look too far. My own wife, Marcia, had to go to Burlington or Bellows Falls to get to White River. <laughs> and uh, that problem existed for about three weeks. And our HR person lived in Pittsfield and she had to be routed up into the uh, Burlington area wow. to come down. And, uh, and there was a lot of adjustments that were necessary and a lot of the members suffered things and they would come to us. I think we were one of the first lines of help that they were looking for. And uh, we did not uh, unreasonably decline anything. We helped people beyond the limits or the borders that they may have been in with their loan limits. And uh, we ignored those because these people needed help. And, uh, and we made sure that our staff knew that we had to pull out all the stops mm -hmm. to help them out. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we are. We changed our name in 1994 to Heritage Family because family was important to us and still is. I didn't realize it was that long ago mm -hmm. that you changed your name. Yeah. 94, we uh, went to a local bar, we had dinner, and I said, okay, nobody's leaving till we come up with a name. So <laughs> we got Heritage Family out of for it. For better or worse. <laughs> That's just what it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you've had, um, What's unique to you, uh, in, in my, you personally, in my mind, among uh, you know, all the Vermont Credit Union people that I've dealt with over the years, um, is your international involvement. Um, and uh, you know, I know you started out on the board of CUNA, mm -hmm. um, but then after that ended up on the board of the World Council of Credit Unions, which exposed you to a, a lot of different 
cultures, uh, but a lot of um, you know people trying to do credit union work in in other countries, and uh, I, you know I'm just wondering if you can tell us you know, what that's been like for you and, you know, what effect that has had on you back here. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess my fondest story is the Philippines. I was in the Philippines in uh, 2002, I believe it was, and uh, I was there for two weeks and World Council had asked me to go speak to many of the uh, credit unions and I just wanted to take a moment and tell you about the Philippine system. Uh, they are, as you know, Joe, uh, they don't have federal insurance. So we have NCUA up to 250,000. They don't have that. And I know you've worked with Peru to try to get that. But it's that way yeah. all over the world. Yeah, not common in, in yeah. the developing nations. So we take that for granted. But uh, World Council has a system that's very similar to CAMEL but it's unique to the World, uh, World Council and they developed it in a software that they give to credit unions and it ties into a system that is very similar to the Olympics. Uh, once you plug all the numbers in and you run the model and the numbers come out, you can get gold, metal, silver, bronze, platinum, and so on. And uh, when they achieve these different levels, they get a hold of their members and they have a parade. Hmm. And they have it police escorted with the sirens and all that. And then they have people like me with World Council who speaks at a, an assembly and congratulates them and gives them the award. And then they always have pigs and bananas and mango and papaya and that stuff to eat. And it's like a little banquet. And there were times I was over there, we'd have like five banquets in a day. And much of it was the same kind of food. Uh, but they really took their achievements seriously and the members felt that attachment to the credit union because of their achievement and then they also felt that the money was safe whereas if you just say to them put the money in you might question whether or not you're going to get it back hmm. so it's not like our insurance piece so World Council figured that out and credit unions as a result have flourished over there I remember one night we went to a an island. It was called Davao, and uh, they had a stadium, and I was talking there, and and uh, it was mostly women, and they uh, women were uh, very much involved with micro enterprise, and you could only imagine that uh, how poor these people were, and they needed some break to get a start in life, and typically a woman might be good at making soup or breads or cookies, and to get started, they would give them money, $80. And then they would go and they would go to another product and they would get more money. And then uh, when they didn't have any collateral, the women would put their, uh, their selves in a group called pods. And there'd be a group of five people that would be essentially co-signers for one another, which resulted in peer pressure, of course. Mm -hmm. So. But the delinquency factor was very minuscule, but these women would be going home and for the first time they were breadwinners and they would have dignity that they never had before. They never experienced that level of responsibility in their entire lives and it changed their lives. And it took serious people and put bright smiles on their faces. And it was so good to see that. And uh, that's an experience I'll never forget. Uh, it was powerful. You know, I've got a very limited exposure to the international scene compared to you um, and have been fortunate to see credit unions and credit union systems in a couple countries. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what has impressed me, um, and I've got to believe you have had a similar experience in the 80 or so countries you've been to, that is that, um, you know, in a lot of the developing nations in particular, like you mentioned the Philippines, for me it's Peru, um, that, you know, those experiences give you a newfound appreciation for what you have here, um, not only as a credit union, but as a citizen of, mm -hmm. of this country too. Uh, all of the conveniences and the things we take for granted that credit unions in some of those developing nations, like the story you told about in the Philippines, 
you know, things that we don't even blink an eye over uh, that are so important to people in those areas. Let me tell you another one. I was in Kenya, in Nairobi, and Nairobi's a big city in Kenya, and they have several slum sections, but this one slum section I was in with the uh, United Nations and uh, our then president of World Council, Pete Greer, and I, and we went uh, and we were talking to some of the people that were building crafts. You know, they, uh, this one girl in particular was 18, and she was making keychains, and she was knitting them or something like that. And uh, she said that we could ask her any question we wanted. And I was talking to her, and I asked her what her frustration was in life because she's living in this slum section. And she told me that. Uh, she had been raped four times. Wow. And uh, she said the problem is the young bucks think if they have sex, mistaken belief, that if they have sex with a virgin, that they'll get rid of AIDS themselves, HIV. Mm. And, uh, and that's where the problem is, education. Uh, it's a mistaken belief that they would get rid of it, and but yet they believe it, so they act on what they believe. Sure. And this is a tragedy, and that's where most of the problems are in this world, in my opinion, is the lack of education, lack of understanding, and that goes right to the root of everything when you drill down into it. A lack of education, you're exactly right. and. You know, bringing it back to home, even here, you know, hopefully we don't have that kind of lack of education, although I'm sure there are some. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, here, um, even in little old Vermont, uh, with, you know, some credit union members and consumers in general, there's a lack of financial uh, understanding and yeah. literacy. And, and that's why, you know, I see in the legislature now so much, I don't see a lot, of, a lot coming from it, but a lot of concern about improving financial literacy in the school systems and uh, for consumers in general uh, because so many people become victim to you know all kinds of different scams and whatnot and it all boils down to education. Well you know that we have nine branches and right. we also have two student branches yes. and I can see firsthand the stuff that you're talking about and uh, it makes a big difference it really does because you're teaching people to help themselves and that's key in this world. And uh, that's what World Council does, and that's what credit unions do. They teach people to help themselves. And uh, we have seminars quite often uh, that we invite people in, and we feed them and, and provide speakers and provide questions and answers. And, and this is very helpful, and we can see the difference in lives that it, it makes. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. So, it's very important. So tell us about the student branches. H how are those operated? Are they they're they're operated, only during the school uh, year? They're, they're just like a regular branch, only a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. They're online to our mainframe. Mm -hmm. They have check printers, and, and the computer does instant uh, transactions, and students will do transactions for teachers and for other students. So you have the students yeah. working the line in these yeah. credit unions. Yeah. And you know, we did branches. it because it was the right thing to do, and we knew we would not make any money out of it. But we didn't do it for money. And But one benefit that we found that we didn't anticipate or see ahead of time was we got <coughs> many students who came on to, to develop careers with us. We've been doing this for a number of years now. And I have some model employees over here that came from that very system. And we didn't see that coming. And it was a great, <laughs> great surprise and a huge benefit to Heritage Family. And uh, we have that branch here in Rutland, and we have another one down in uh, Bennington. And we have great support with uh, uh, teaching staff. And uh, many of those people go on to serve in an advisory capacity for our student uh, elements. And uh, it works very, very well. It's very effective. Heritage family, we use two words. Uh, well, more than two, but we're friendly and personable service, and then we also want to be electronically sophisticated. Those have never changed. Those are two thoughts that we've had mm -hmm. in our core forever. Mm -hmm. And they need to remain there forever, too. And I believe they will. 
And so again, that kind of ties back to the education in some ways too. Yes, it does. Uh, not only helping safeguard people, but to help them safeguard themselves in terms yeah. of recognizing pitfalls yeah. know, the next time they come along. We uh, have said this old adage so many times, if something looks like it's too good to be true, it perhaps is, or po probably right. is. And we see that all the time, all the time, and we can't stress it enough to our membership to, you know, if you've got something that, that looks like a good deal, you know, do a good job looking at it because uh, you might be a fraud victim if you don't. Right. What are you most proud of? What things are you most proud of in your career at uh, Mass Credit Union? Well, uh, I'm proud of the culture that we've created and I'm extremely proud of the image that we have in our community. Uh, and my toughest challenge as a CEO has been to hire the right people for the right job at the right time and then get out of their way and let them do the job and give them an opportunity to be creative. Mm -hmm. Because all too often we get so busy with our day-to-day -day activity, we don't take time to be creative. We're just band-aiding things and going through the steps of keeping up with things. But we need to have time to create. And, uh, and I think that's the culture that we have. We uh, provide time for our staff to, to be creative and initiative. What do you think that credit unions like this or any cr credit unions overall, cr Vermont credit unions or the credit industry, is going to look, everybody asks this, what is it going to look like down the road? You know, hmm. Ten years down the road? Or it, it's that? not hard to, t to tell you with conviction that there's going to be compression. I believe that we have some challenges that are going to be extremely difficult and uh, between the trade and the service part of our business mm -hmm. and to keep the tax exemption in place. Uh, those are immediate challenges, which mm -hmm. I know you are familiar with. Um, but the compression is going to occur with the credit unions. We have 23 now. We're going to end up with probably two-thirds of that mm -hmm. in 10 years, if not mm -hmm. lower. Mm -hmm. Our membership, though, is not going to decline. Right. Our membership is going to continue to grow. It's grown quite well over the last uh, 20 years, and it will continue to grow. And I think that uh, credit unions are more legitimate now in the eyes of our consumer than they've ever been. And I think that that image is, is going to get better and better and better as time goes on. But there's challenges and the challenges are, I mean, you and I both have grown up in a cooperative nature and, and we know that it's easier if you've got two people doing a job than, than just one. And that's where we need to be. So when you and I you know, started in the eight, eight, 78 and, and through the 80s and whatnot, credit unions, <clears throat> you know, had very defined fields of membership and were somewhat insulated from each other. Um, and so there wasn't a lot of, there were community-based credit unions, but they, they were separate, as you recall. Um, but today, uh, you know, a lot of credit unions, m the vast majority of credit unions have geographical related fields of membership, or if they're not geographical, they're such that, you know, they are, all credit unions are overlapping with each other a lot, partly because of merger, partly because of fields of membership. So, you know, I guess my question to you, when you talk about credit unions being cooperative, and I believe them to be cooperative, but I wonder if you and your peers are as cooperative today as you were in the, say, 80s and 90s. That's a very good question. Uh, and I'm not sure I know how to answer it. Uh, but I, I will tell you this, that the standards that Heritage Family has can only be better appreciated when they have somebody else to compare it to. Okay. So if somebody else wants to set up a credit union in my community, come on in. And hopefully we will shine even brighter because they have some other credit union to compare that to. Now, that's not to say flippantly that we're better than anybody, but we have a good image in the community, mm -hmm. we've done a good job, and uh, I think it would pay off. Uh, but we do continue, I mean, I, I have a lot of things that I do collaboratively with other credit unions, and not only here in the state, but uh, around the country. And networking has always proved to be a very effective way of advancing your, your business. 
And I still do that here in Vermont with uh, many of the credit unions. Uh, it's been a worthwhile initiative. Fewer credit unions in the future, which has been happening right along anyway. Yeah. Um, more modern technology, mm -hmm. you think? Or, or new technologies, having to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. Yeah. Do you think that um, as there become fewer and bigger credit unions, and any financial institution, um, that there is an increasing opportunity for the narrowly focused service provider, whether it's a credit union or something else, that focuses on just a few things but does it really, really well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a golden opportunity for those kinds of organizations. You know, all of these years that you've got behind you, a lot of accomplishments, a lot of projects, you've seen lots of history in credit union land, you've seen other credit union movements, um, so a lot of lessons that you've learned and whatnot. Um, for someone that's um, starting out where you started out in 78, 80, um, today, what would you be advising that person? I'd have to do this upon reflection and you have to keep in mind that we were two million dollars when we started and we're 361 today. So it was a lot different but un it gave me, because we were small, it gave me the ability to sit back at two o'clock in the morning and evaluate my balance sheet, my profit and loss statement because if you don't have that understanding, you're gonna find it very difficult to run a business like this. And there's a lot more that goes into it, but that's a very core thing that you need to have. And then when you begin a business like this, or when you start a business yourself, uh, you have to be committed, you have to be dedicated, and you have to work awfully hard. And there's a lot of sacrifices that your family and you have to make because your time isn't your own. You're married to the movement. You are. Yeah. Right. And you know that. I know that. A lot of people but do. But it's been a labor of love for me. I'm sure it has for you. Yes, it has. And, yeah. uh, you know, I feel very confident that uh, my organization is going to uh, do very well even in my absence. And uh, they have uh, a good foundation. They're all strong. They've learn to function without me because I've traveled so much and uh, so they've been in training for a number of years essentially. <laughs> <laughs> well it's been nice chatting with you. Thank it's you very much for your uh, your stories and and your words of wisdom and everything and uh, good luck to you when when retirement gets here whenever that is we know it's an indefinite but when it does yeah. uh, congratulations to you. Thank um, you and thank you for for watching. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it.